Hey kids, welcome to Kids Church. I'm so glad you could be here. Today is a really exciting day. Does anyone know what today is? That's right, it's Easter. And what are some things you do to celebrate Easter? Maybe it's an Easter egg hunt or opening baskets. Those are some really fun things to do on Easter. But does anyone know why we actually celebrate Easter? That's right, we celebrate Easter because it's the day that Jesus rose from the dead. In today's lesson, we're gonna learn all about why Easter is so important. And it's not about the bunnies and candy, but we'll talk about that more in a few minutes. Let's first stand and sing a song together. The sun is shining down on me My heart is full of love and peace God's given me so much I want the world around to see How much He really means to me God's given me so much So I'm gonna get my hands up I'm gonna get my hands up Wave them all around Wave them up and down I'm gonna get my To me. The sun is shining down on me. My heart is full of love and peace. God's given me so much. I want the world around to see how much He really means to me. God's given me so much. So I'm gonna get my hands up, I'm gonna get my hands up And wave them all around, wave them up and down I'm gonna get my feet up, I'm gonna make them jump up Jump up to the sky, way up to the sky And I'm gonna give a shout out, I'm gonna make it so loud, so loud given to me great job I know God loves hearing all your voices praising him now let's say our big idea together Easter means we can have a new life let's get ready for a lesson Hey kids, today is a really special day. Do you know what today is? Easter! The day you get all kinds of candy and get to have Easter egg hunts. I love all that fun stuff, but do you know what Easter is really about? Well, that's what we're talking about today. So here are the most important things you need to know about Easter. Easter is not about bunnies and eggs. Have you ever done an Easter egg hunt? Do you usually get a bag full of goodies for Easter? Those are some fun things, and it's good to have some fun when you're celebrating Easter. But did you know it's not actually about bunnies and candy? It's actually about something way cooler. Easter is all about Jesus. You remember Christmas, right? The holiday that celebrates the birth of Jesus? Easter is another important day on the calendar that celebrates Jesus. But it's not about his birth. It's about what happens at the end of his life. And it's an event that changed everything. Easter means Jesus rose from the dead. Have you ever heard about Jesus coming on the cross? Well, he actually did die, but don't worry. Three days later, he came back alive because he's super powerful. He fed 5,000 people with just a few fish and the bread. He walked on water and he healed sick people. But the most powerful thing he ever did was rise from the dead. The grown-up word for this is resurrection. Easter means we'll rise from the dead. But maybe that's a little weird. Kids don't usually think about dying. And it might actually seem pretty scary. But we can't live here forever. Everyone will die someday. But Jesus' power wasn't just for us. It was for everybody. 
Because of his power, we can all have eternal life too. Memory verse. And just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father, now we also live new lives. How awesome is that? Jesus shares his power with everyone that accepts him into their heart. Easter means we can have new life. If Easter is about Jesus, why are there bunnies everywhere? It's because bunnies have lots of babies and babies mean new life. And that's why we celebrate in the spring too, when everything starts to grow again. It's because Jesus, in his resurrection, gives us new life. So kids, this Easter, have lots of fun, but still remember what Easter is actually about, Jesus. So what did we learn from the video today? Let's review. Who do we celebrate on Easter? Jesus. What is the grown-up word for when Jesus rose from the dead? Resurrection. True or false, we can have a new life through Jesus. True, Jesus came to earth with a mission to accomplish. That mission was to die on the cross and rise again. And that's exactly what he did. He did this to save us from our sin. The Bible tells us we have a problem with sin and Jesus fixed that problem. Because of Jesus, we get to live in heaven someday. And it also means that we get a new life while we're here on earth. This new life means we can live to honor God and tell our friends about him so that they can follow him too. How cool is that? Jesus loved us so much that he was willing to give his life to help us. And he uses this awesome power to give us both a life here and on in heaven. That reminds me of our memory verse. Let's all stand and say it together. And just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father, now we also may live a new life, Romans 6, 4. This verse reminds us of the awesome power of Jesus, that even death can't keep its hold on him. Jesus conquered sin and death for us. He did it so that we could be free to live a life that honors him. What an amazing thing Jesus did for us. Jesus saved us from our sins and all we have to do is learn how to follow him. It's that easy. If you want to learn what it means to follow Jesus, talk to your parents about it today. If you know what it means to follow Jesus, then you shouldn't keep it to yourself. You should tell others about the awesome sacrifice Jesus made for us. Tell them about how much he loves us and how he wants to give us a new life. Now let's stand and sing another song together. Okay, let's all say the big idea together one last time. 
Easter means we can have new life. Let's pray. God, thank you so much that you gave your son Jesus to die for our sins so that we can have a new life. I pray that we don't take that new life for granted, that we live a life that honors you as we follow you in everything we do. And I thank you and I pray all this in Jesus' name, amen. Let's watch this video on the empty tomb and Jesus' resurrection. After hanging in pain on the cross for hours, Jesus cried out, it is finished, and he gave his spirit to God. Despite his sadness, Joseph of Arimathea, a man who was secretly a disciple of Jesus, knew that to give Jesus a proper burial, he had to do it before the quickly approaching Sabbath. Filled with sadness, Joseph went to Pontius Pilate, the Roman governor, to ask if he could remove Jesus' body from the cross. After Pilate gave him permission, he and Nicodemus went to the cross with materials to prepare Jesus' body for burial. Together, Joseph and Nicodemus carefully wrapped Jesus' body in strips of linen with burial spices, which was a part of Jewish tradition. Near the place where Jesus was crucified, there was a garden where a tomb had been cut out of the rock, something only rich people could afford. This tomb belonged to Joseph, and no one had yet been laid to rest there. It was in this tomb that Joseph and Nicodemus laid the body of Jesus. Before they left, they rolled a huge stone in front of the tomb's entrance, sealing it shut. Before the sun had risen on Sunday morning, Mary Magdalene gathered the spices and perfumes she had prepared to complete the burial customs for Jesus and made her way to the tomb. When she arrived, she found the giant stone had been rolled away and the tomb was empty. Deeply worried by what she had seen, she ran as fast as she could to tell the disciples, Peter and John, what had happened. They've taken our Lord's body, and we don't know where, Mary cried. After hearing Mary's story, Peter and John ran to the tomb. John arrived first, but he did not enter the tomb. Without waiting, Peter walked into the tomb and saw that the strips of linen that Jesus had been wrapped up in were laying empty in a pile and the burial cloth that was placed over his head and face was neatly folded next to them. As John entered the empty tomb, he didn't fully understand what had happened, but he believed that Jesus had risen from the dead. Confused by what they had seen, Peter and John returned to their homes. Too upset to return home with Peter and John, Mary Magdalene stayed at the empty tomb. As she cried, she looked up through her tears into the tomb, and she saw two angels in bright white robes. They were sitting where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and one at the foot. Seeing Mary's tears, the angels asked, Woman, why are you crying? Mary said, They have taken my Lord away, and I don't know where they have put him. As Mary turned away from the angels to make her way home, she saw a man had been standing behind her. But this was no ordinary man. It was Jesus. Somehow, Mary did not recognize Jesus. She thought he was the gardener. Jesus asked Mary, Why are you crying? Who are you looking for? Mary, still thinking he was the gardener, begged him, If you have taken him away, please tell me where so I can get him. Then Jesus called Mary's name, and suddenly she recognized that the man was Jesus. She exclaimed, Teacher, and fell to her knees to worship at his feet. Jesus told Mary to go tell the disciples. After hearing Mary's report of what happened at the tomb and that she had seen Jesus, the disciples gathered together behind locked doors, afraid of what the Jewish leaders might do to them. Suddenly, Jesus appeared among them in the locked house and said, Peace to you! The disciples were so happy to see Jesus with their own eyes. After Jesus had shown them the wounds in his hands and his side, he told the disciples that they would continue his mission, going throughout the world and telling people about God's love. Now it's time for crafts.
Let's all stand and sing one last song together. If you want more information on Kids Church or our programs, please visit us at www.phoenixchurchofchrist.org or email us at info at phoenixcoc.org. See you next week.